the chant just now, one with strong respect for the training. It's important that we realize that this is what the Buddhist teachings are all about. They're a training. Training requires discipline. The realization that our untrained minds cause a lot of suffering. The Buddha once said that the mark of a wise person is realizing that the mind needs training. If you want to be truly happy, you've got to train the mind. Because the biggest source of trouble in the world is this untrained mind. Greed, anger, and delusion take over, and they can destroy all kinds of things. Having respect for the training means that we have to have respect for the training over and above our own preferences. Because after all, our own preferences come from this untrained mind. We have to learn how to look past them. And it's interesting that of the three main aspects of the training, training in virtue, training in concentration, training in discernment, the one that the Buddha singles out to stress in those verses we chanted just now is respect for concentration, the ability to get the mind centered in the body with a sense of ease, even with a sense of fullness, refreshment, rapture. It sounds like something we would all like, yet we tend to overlook it and dismiss it. What little bits and pieces of concentration we do have in the mind, bits and pieces of stillness we have, we tend to trample on, and as a result, it never gets a chance to grow. So as we're sitting here, give the mind a chance to settle down, find where those little spots of stillness and ease are. A sense of ease in the body has got to be someplace. Even when there's pain in some parts of the body, there are other parts where there's a fair sense of well-being. It may not be impressive to begin with, but if you give it space and allow it to stay undisturbed all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. It will develop a sense of fullness, and that fullness will grow. It gives the mind an anchor. The images in the canon are many. It gives the mind nourishment. It gives it solidity. It gives it a support. It's a shelter for the mind. They call it Vihara Dhamma, a home for the mind. It's medicine for the mind. All these good things. So you have to learn how to respect it, because in the beginning it seems rather unimportant. There are many, so many other things that are more demanding that require our attention right now. Seem more interesting, more important. And then these little bits and pieces of stillness get pushed back into the background. They don't have a chance to grow. They don't have a chance to reach fullness. And then, of course, when we need them, they're not there. We often come to the Buddhist teachings more interested in the insights than in the training, thinking that, well, if we can just grok on to the insights, that'll take care of everything. And there is some benefit in learning about the Buddha's teachings on insight first gives you a sense of proportion, gives you a sense of direction in the practice, what the Buddha calls appropriate attention, seeing things in terms of the Four Noble Truths. In other words, looking at the present moment and realizing it's not just one thing you do in the present moment, there are actually four things you have to look for, four things you can potentially do. You look for the stress. When you find the stress, you try to comprehend it. Or you can look for the cause of stress, the craving that underlies the stress. You try to let it go. As for the cessation of stress, you try to realize that, notice it. 
you know, the path of practice that leads to the cessation of stress, you try to develop it. The, Mu the Buddha never gave a Johnny one-note instructions in meditation, just be the knowing or just be mindful. These four main categories. But the meditation comes under the path. And that's something you have to develop. You have to work at it. In particular, you have to develop the concentration. And John Lee compares it to building a bridge across a river. He says the foundations for the bridge on the near end and the far end, in other words, on this bank and that bank, they're not too hard. It's the ones that are right in the middle of the river. Those are the ones that are hard to establish, but they're the ones that are really necessary. The concentration is the middle of the three trainings. That's the one that's the foundations in the middle of the river. It says it takes time and effort to get those established, but once they're established, then you've got a good solid bridge. And when you develop the concentration, that's when the insights can really begin to do their work, instead of just giving you a general perspective on things. They give you insight into the movements of the mind. They enable you to see where you've been causing unnecessary suffering, unnecessary stress. One, they give you the stillness so you can actually see these things happening. And two, there is that sense of ease and well-being so that the insights don't hit you when you feel weak, when you feel hungry. Concentration is a strength. Concentration is meant to be a food. So the mind feels strong, well-nourished, and ready to admit where it's made its mistakes in the past. If you simply read the content of the insights, as we noticed this evening, the eye is burning, the ear, the nose, the tongue, the body, the mind, burning with passion, aversion, and delusion. It doesn't leave much. Everything is on fire. Everything the mind lands on, looking for happiness, it sets fire to. And that insight taken in isolation is pretty discouraging. But if you work on that insight from the basis of concentration, it works in a very different way. It's not discouraging at all. It encourages you to keep going deeper and deeper into the concentration, exploring this area of the body that you're in in the present moment, getting more established there, getting more, more at home in the concentration. I guess you look at all the other things you could be focused on and realize that they, they don't offer the, the happiness that you once thought they did. This is why the Buddha calls it awakening. We dream about things, looking for happiness here and there. And you know, when we try to find it there, as I said, the, the fires of the mind scorch whatever it is. The jhana, right concentration, is a cool burn. It's a cool fire. So in this case, in this way, the insight gets you deeper and deeper into concentration, more solidly established here. So instead of being discouraging, the insight is liberating. So this foundation is very important. Once you've got a good, solid foundation for happiness inside, then you can live in the world without scorching it. In other words, if you're looking for happiness in relationships or looking for happiness in things, you're misunderstanding the idea that you could find an ultimate happiness there is what burns those things up. But if your happiness is already well established here, then you don't burn the things you touch. You appreciate things for what happiness they do have to offer, that they can offer it to you. 
And that's plenty enough, because you've got your deeper needs are met inside. That weight we put on our relationships, or that weight we put on our possessions, on our bodies, hoping for them to supply all our needs for happiness. It's no wonder those things get crushed. That's a pretty heavy weight. But if you shift your center of gravity so that it's more inside, then you're not leaning on those other things. You don't destroy them. You don't weigh them down. You don't set them on fire. This ability to get the mind centered and still in the body in the present moment, to be familiar with the body get in touch with the energy flow in the body and learn how to direct it in such a way that it becomes more and more livable here in the body. You've really got to respect this ability. You've got to give it time. You've got to give it energy. Because it's what enables the whole rest of the training to succeed. It provides the foundation. For insight to do its work. 